Hello everyone, my name is Jay. I head up the R&D team here at MHA and with me is my R&D colleague, uh, Lee. And we are here to discuss some of the key changes that were, in, that were introduced in the spring budget yesterday, some of which are a reversal of the changes introduced in the autumn budget in October 22. Lee, if we can uh, refresh the audience on some of these changes in, uh, uh, that were in the autumn budget. By context to the R&D uh, regime as it was, uh, enhanced expenditure was 130%. In the autumn budget, this was then reduced to 86%. A much more extreme reduction than what was expected uh, due to the fact corporation tax was rising to 25% and so to retain the 130% would have actually increased R&D uh, uh, R &D relief available. Along with that in the autumn uh, statement was the reduction for loss making companies for tax credits from 14.5% to 10%. Mm. These now somewhat have been reversed or restrained following uh, the Chancellor's March statement. Mm. Mm. Yeah, exactly. And I, I guess when we translate that into real figures for, uh, you know, what does that mean for every hundred pounds of R&D spend, the traditional, uh, or, or the established SME scheme, for example, would give you £25 to, uh, uh, to the 200 if you're profit making, uh, roughly £19, to the, uh, £19 to 100 if you're break even, and £33 for uh, every 100 if you're loss making. But the changes would have meant that oh, there would be a massive slash in benefit for loss making companies, especially SMEs, which are key. Uh, which are which are key claimants for the SME, uh, uh, for this uh, tax relief. So uh, the changes would have meant that uh, loss making companies go from thirty three pound to nineteen, break even companies go from nineteen to nine, and uh, profit making companies go from twenty five to uh, twenty one. And the other key change was the um, uh, exclusion of international. Uh, subcontracted costs, which again impacts these con uh, these uh, SMEs massively, right? And um, uh, in the budget yesterday, what was announced was a reversal of, um, or rather a delay of excluding international subcontracting. So that's been delayed to the 1st of April 2024, rather than coming into force in 1st of April 23. It's welcome news. But Lee, it seems a bit of a, a, a measure that, um, again, I think companies are scratching their heads and looking at HMRC. And there's been a rate change as well, which is HMRC have, are creating a new category, which is R&D intensive companies, which would involve companies spending 40, companies that have 40% of their spend relating to R&D, where they would get 27 pound out of 100, um, which uh, which they're maintaining the 14 and a half percent surrender rate, right? Um, and uh, I think Lee, you and I were discussing that it, although the although that the this reversal is welcome compared to the autumn budget, it shows a lot of inconsistency, right? Yeah, the, the reversal of the 14, reversal to the 14.5% and the reversal to delay overseas workers means that we've now got three different R&D regimes with two different schemes within the three mm. regimes which are, which are we'll be dealing with at the moment because of the way the accounting periods mm end so there's three different regimes two different schemes mm. and how is a sma company meant to plan for what it is it may receive back mm. from its investment uh, which it then plans to pump into its ne next project yeah. it's 
Yeah. It's a slight mess if if you are a business because ha- there's no way you can plan to know mm. what your investment is going to return and how mm. much of that return can be put into your next project. That's right. Yeah, and and I think um, uh, uh, just to highlight for the audience in uh, in the autumn budget, the the Ardex scheme, the rate would go up from thirteen to twenty percent, mm-hmm. and the government had announced the intention to merge the La- the Ardex and SME schemes and introduce that from the first of April. So again, that increases the complexity because now you've got three different SME schemes, but that will eventually merge into the Ardex scheme. So if you were a business, you'd be looking at this and going. Where am I supposed to sit? You know, and and uh, the other thing is that the, the we all we all knew that HMRC was trying to increase compliance. We knew that the government was trying to reduce spending via the R and D schemes, but there there's very important work that these schemes support, and just because some people are have not been compliant, or there's been boutiques that uh, have gained a reputation for um, not giving the best advice. Basically, that has been used as a standard to paint everyone. And I think that's quite an unfair assessment on the government's part. They need to be more nuanced in how they come out with this. Um, some of the things we were discussing, Lee, for example, was certification or a licensing for R&D for providing R and D advice as a tax professional, right? Yeah, it's it's only now recently that mm. uh, any sort of format of what an R and D claim should be is being introduced by HMRC, and it may be the case that from in reality the first of April twenty twenty four, where there will be a singular, most probably be a singular scheme, and the set format that the R and D system will start. Yeah. correctly again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's been our very quick review. And uh, for more information, please uh, uh, come through to the MHA Hub where you'll find uh, a, a lot more detailed information there. And uh, please contact us if you have any queries. Thank you. Thank you.